What's up guys, this is Mr. Erdogan and this is episode 9 in my series to help you guys learn how to read music. Okay, in this episode, we are going to be talking about a few different things. But before we begin, let's go back to the challenge I left you with at the end of the last episode. So, last episode, I left you with a proper musical staff with 10 notes on the staff. And it was your job to figure out what the names were for each of these notes. So how did you do? Were you successful? Did you use the tricks I taught you in the previous two episodes? Well, let's see how you did. Okay, the first thing we should do to answer this type of question is remember what our tricks are, and then write them on the staff beside the notes. So if you remember, the first trick was called face on the space, and we use that trick to figure out what the note names are for the notes on the spaces. So let's go ahead and put that on our staff first. Don't forget we need to start that at the bottom of the staff, and we're gonna put that on the left side of the notes. Obviously starting with our F, then our A, then C, then E as it goes upward. And the next trick we learned was called every good boy deserves fudge. And for that trick, we had to take the first letter of each of those words, then put those letters on the line starting from the bottom line. So I'll write that this time on the right side of the staff, just so it's not too crowded there on the left. So now that we've got our tricks properly written onto our staff, the rest is quite simple. So it looks like number one is a G, number two is a D, number three is a high F, number four is a low E, number five is a C, and number six was the tricky one. And I'll come back to that one in a moment to explain how to get that one. Number seven is a B, number eight is a high E, number nine is a low F, and number 10 is an A. So how do we go about getting the answer for number six? Let's look only at a staff with this note and our two tricks. Now let's compare this to our musical ladder with our note names written on the ladder. So if we use our two tricks, we can see that the note under it is an F and the note under that is an E. So it's easy to find where we are on our musical ladder and there's your F and there's your E on the ladder. But the note we have to figure out for number six is actually one note above the F. So if we think about our note names in music, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, then G. So that must mean that the note above the F on the staff must be a G. In fact, it's our high G. Did you get that correct? How did you do with the whole challenge? I want to hear from you. Let me know. Okay, let's move on to the main topic for this lesson. So far, we've learned a lot about notes and how long to play them, as well as what pitch to play them at. But in music, there are also symbols that we use to tell us when not to play and when to rest instead. And these symbols, funny enough, are actually called rests. So a rest is used when you want a musician to stop playing for a moment and just to be silent. So the way we learn rests is exactly like how we learned our quarter note, half note, whole note, and eighth note. So rests are very similar to notes and they are named similarly, but the difference between a rest and a note is that when you see it while you're playing music, you just rest. You stay quiet and you don't play. Now the symbols we use for rests look like these. They actually look absolutely nothing like the symbols we have already learned for notes. So that's going to be the tricky part. We're going to have to learn a whole new set of symbols. But thankfully, like I said earlier, they are named almost the same and we can learn them in the same way that we learned the notes originally. So if we take a quarter note here, we know that this quarter note is worth one beat. So we can match that up to its counterpart rest that is also worth one beat, which is this symbol. And this rest is simply called a quarter rest. Quarter note, quarter rest. Not too bad, right? One means that you play for a single beat and the other means that you stay quiet and rest for a single beat. Okay, let's look at another one. Here is a half note, and we know that the half note would be played for two beats. And we also have a corresponding rest, which also equals two beats. And this rest is called a half rest. Are you starting to see the pattern? Next, we have our whole note, which we know is worth four beats. And the corresponding rest to the whole note looks like this. And it would be called, can you guess? If you guessed a whole rest, you would be correct and both are worth four beats. And finally, we have our eighth note here, and you know that the eighth note is worth 0.5 beats, and the matching rest for this note is called an eighth rest. And just like the note, the eighth rest is also worth 0.5 beats. Okay, let's do some music math with our new rests to help us practice. But these questions are going to be a mix of notes and rests, so it might be a little bit tricky. Okay, here we have a quarter rest, 
plus a half note plus a whole rest. Can you tell me the number of beats in total that would equal? Well, let's see. The quarter rest is worth one beat, the half note is worth two beats, and the whole rest is worth four beats. So after we've just plugged in those numbers, it simply becomes a math problem of one plus two plus four, which equals seven beats. Okay, next let's start with the whole note. Then let's minus an eighth rest and another eighth rest. Then let's add a quarter rest and let's see what we get. Well, the whole note is worth four beats. The two eighth rests are each worth half a beat. So we take those away and the quarter rest is one beat. So after we plug those numbers in, we get four minus 0.5 minus 0.5 plus one. And that basically turns into still four beats. For our final example question, let's do something a bit trickier. Now, as a reminder, this is what a half rest looks like, and this is what a whole rest looks like. They both actually look very similar. One looks like a hat, and the other one is like an upside down hat. One way we can remember which one is the half rest and which one is the whole rest is to spell the word for the direction they are facing. And I'll explain what I mean. So for the rest that is pointing up from the line, we can remember that it is worth two beats because the word up has two letters, U-P. That means it is the half rest because it only has two beats in it. And the rest that is pointing down from the line is worth four beats because the word down D-O-W-N is spelled with four letters. Therefore, that rest is the whole rest because it has four beats. Okay, now here is your final practice question. What if we started with a half rest, then we added a whole rest, then subtracted a whole rest, and then subtracted a half rest? How many beats would we have at the end? Well, after we plugged in our numbers into the equation, that would turn into two plus four minus four minus two, which would equal zero. Okay, now usually at this point, I would leave you with a challenge that relates to the lesson topic, but since next episode is the last episode of this season, I'm going to leave you with a full practice test to work on. So if you look in the description of this video, you will find a link to a PDF file that you can download, which will have new practice questions that cover everything we've talked about for this entire season. Next episode, I will be going over all the answers to that test, so go download it now, fill out the test and you'll find all the answers to the test in episode 10. Thanks for watching guys and as usual if you haven't subscribed yet or like this video please make sure you do that now. See you guys in episode 10.